So investing in real estate tax-free in Canada, is that a myth? or is that reality? In this video, I'm gonna go into detail about how you can invest in the Canadian real estate market tax-free. Keep watching. So with all the American content out there, a lot of people will notice that all these Americans can invest in real estate tax-free, but we can't do that here in Canada. It's actually because we don't have a 1031 exchange. Now, essentially what that is, is that in America, you can buy a property, you can sell it, and then you have a certain amount of time to take those profits and reinvest it into another asset, and you don't pay any capital gains tax. It's essentially deferred until that property is sold or until you pass away, and then even then, there's actually ways to not pay tax ever on that investment. Where in Canada, when you sell a rental property, you're subject to capital gains taxes. Um, so you just can't roll all that profit into another deal. You actually have to pay taxes no matter what, unless you do this strategy. Now, there's a lot of different strategies out there, um, but it all boils down to be pretty much the same thing. You buy a property, you renovate a property, you rent out a property, you refinance a property, and you repeat it. This is also known as the Burr method, or some people call it flip to yourself, or simply people just call it, you buy a property, you refinance it, and you recycle the money, which is honestly what I mostly say to people because explaining the Burr can just get a little bit too complicated or overwhelming for some people. So how is this tax-free? Well, in Canada, you see, if we're buying a property, we are renovating the property, we then rent the property out, we then refinance it. And the refinance portion is the tax-free way of doing it. You are getting that property appraised at a higher value as long as you've done the, the right renovations and the property market has done its job by slowly going up and appreciating. You take that money and you can then pull that equity out tax free. Now, yes, it is a new loan on that mortgage. So what happens is let's say you have a $100,000 property. You, by the time you're down payment and you've paid off the mortgage a little bit, you are now down to $50,000 on that mortgage. So what happens is then you then get an appraisal on the property of that 150,000 Okay, you now have $100,000 worth of equity and the bank will allow you to take out 80% of that equity. So what you do is then you then take out the $80,000. Your mortgage that was originally $50,000 is now $130,000. But the $80,000 that you took out is tax-free because it's a new loan. It's not subject to capital gains tax. And yes, some people might be, well, you're just more in debt. But the whole purpose of this is that that new loan, that $130,000 mortgage you now have after taking out the $80,000 is still being covered by the tenants paying the mortgage down or the tenants that are living at the property. And a lot of people might be like, well, Colton, now I have a $130,000 mortgage. That's more debt. That is terrible. Well, in today's world, you know, we are getting money at less than 3% interest. In some cases, if you're in a variable rate mortgage, you're getting close to actually about 1% or 1.5%. So if you can pay 3% or 2% of interest, but then you can then turn that into a 10 15, 20 plus return on that money, then you are making money off of the bank, other people's money. The most important thing is that when you're doing this method, the Burr method or the flip to yourself or the buy and refinance method, when you're doing this, it's most powerful in rental properties because your tenants are still paying down the mortgage, they're still paying the bills, and there's still a little bit of profit left over for you to either live on or you to then reinvest in another deal. And that's why this method is so 
good. And that's why it is so important that you understand the Burr method or the flip to yourself or the buy and refinance method because it can scale your portfolio way faster than anything else. And this method can be so powerful for a first time home buyer looking to get into a property, refinance it, and then recycle that money into another property and build a property portfolio. I'm gonna show you how. So this is a real true example of what you can do with this method. You buy a property, your first property for $200,000. Now, of course, some of you might laugh because $200,000 doesn't buy anything, but in some areas in Canada, in the United States as well, you can get a duplex, a triplex for $200,000. But let's say that you have a duplex for $200,000 and you're a first time home buyer. So you have to put down 5%, which equals $10,000. Okay, so you got closing costs and some renovations in there. Let's say all in all, you're in this property for $20,000. So it's a first time home buyer, you can buy a $200,000 home for about 20 grand. Let's just say. Now, in a year from now, when you're gonna refinance this property, the market's gone up, or you bought an undervalued property to begin with because it was the ugliest house in the block. Now, all of a sudden, this property is worth, and this was a real example that I've done, $315,000 one year later. So it's one year later, you bought this for $200,000. The new value is now $315,000. This is doable. And what's left on your mortgage is $190,000. Now I know it would probably be less, but I'm just trying to do easy numbers here. So if you take these two numbers, the bank will lend you $62,000 and you are only in this property for $20,000. So now you can take $62,000 and reinvest this into another property or two, depending on your market. Now, this is why this method is so powerful and how you can repeat this method over and over and over again, how you can scale your portfolio from one property to multiple properties within a short couple of years. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some value from it. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you click the subscribe button. And like always, I'll see you in the next video.